Ah, MetaMask, MetaMask, MetaMask. If you've been following blockchain and Ethereum for a while, you probably know what is MetaMask. MetaMask is the most popular wallet for Ethereum decentralized applications. And for developers like me who have been in the blockchain space for a while, it brings mixed feelings. Because on the one hand, we all feel familiar with MetaMask, we feel attached to it because it's been part of the Ethereum ecosystem since the beginning. On the other hand, we also really dislike MetaMask. Seed phrases, multiple confirmation screens when we transfer tokens, unreadable confirmation messages. If that's not easy for us developers, it's even less easy for end users. And to be fair, this is not specific to MetaMask. Many other Ethereum wallets have the same problems. If we want to achieve mass adoption for decentralized application, we need to improve massively the user experience of Ethereum wallets. And that's why we have some clever people who created smart wallets. Smart wallets are modern wallets that bring massive UX improvements by moving the wallet into a smart contract. Argent, Gnosis Safe or DAP wallets are some example of smart wallets and they are getting some serious traction. If you want to stay relevant as a blockchain developer, you need to know what is a smart wallet, how it works, and how to integrate it in your decentralized application. And that's what I'm going to explain in this video. If you don't know me, I'm Julian, and on my channel, Eat the Blocks, I teach blockchain development and how to find your first blockchain job. Okay, so let's start with the problems of traditional wallets like MetaMask. First, it's not easy to keep a backup of your wallet. A seed phrase is a series of words that is used to generate all the private keys and addresses in an Ethereum wallet. The current method for backing up your Ethereum wallet is to store a copy of the seed phrase securely. If your wallet has malfunction and you've lost your seed phrase, or if someone steals your seed phrase, you lose access to all the funds of your wallet. Not good. Another problem is multiple confirmations for token transfers. When you transfer an ERC20 token, you need to do two transactions. The first one to approve the recipient address to spend your token, and a second transaction to actually do the transfer. That forces users to validate two confirmation screens, and that's really confusing for a lot of users. And another problem is you need to pay for gas for all transactions. This really turns off a lot of users who choose not to use the DAP instead. Okay, so how smart wallets can solve these problems? First, smart wallets have an easy way to back up your funds. Instead of a seed phrase, smart wallets have a system of recovery. When you create your wallet, you set up a few recovery addresses that have the right to initiate the recovery process. Typically, you pick some friends. If you lose access, you ask your friend to initiate the recovery process and the funds of the wallet can be sent to the address of your choice. Another cool stuff about security is multi-sig. You can set up your smart wallet in a way where you need several signature before approving a transaction. You can also set up a daily spending limit exactly like we have on our ATM cards. Another cool thing you can do is meta transactions, also called gasless transactions. With the meta transaction, you sign a message with your private key that approves the transaction, but you don't send the transaction yourself. You send this signed message to an API that will actually send the transaction on your behalf by embedding inside the signed message. And after, the smart contract of the smart wallet can verify that the signed message is correct and actually carried out the transaction. Another cool thing you can do with smart wallet is batch transactions. If you have a couple of transactions that you want to group together in a single transaction, you can do this with a smart wallet. A direct application of that is to transfer an ERC20 token with just one transaction. Next, we're going to see how a smart wallet works. First of all, there are two kinds of addresses in Ethereum. The first kind of address is called externally owned address or just EOA. And the other kind of address is a smart contract address. EOA addresses are controlled by private keys which are kept outside of the blockchain in the wallet of each user. And for smart contract, they have no private keys associated. They are only controlled by their code. Okay, so that's it for Ethereum address. Now we're going to see the architecture of a smart wallet. So you have the smart contract of the smart wallet. That's the most important part of the system. That's where you will store all your Ether, ERC20 tokens, etc. Then you have the front end of the wallet. It will be a mobile application or a browser extension. 
that's where you will store the EOA of the user. This address will control the smart contract of the smart wallet. Then you can also have a backend API for more advanced usage like meta transactions, but that's not strictly required. Next, I would like to walk you through the code of a smart wallet called the Dapper wallet. It's a smart wallet that was created by Dapper Labs, so that's the company that also created CryptoKitties, which is one of the most popular game on Ethereum. So this is the repo for the smart wallet. And we're gonna go inside the contracts directory. And we're going to start with the wallet factory. So that's how we can create new wallet. So here, let's go inside wallet factory dot So let's scroll down. And here, this is the function that is used to deploy a new wallet, deploy a clone wallet. So you have to provide three arguments. So recovery address. So that's an address that is able to recover the funds. If you ever lost the private key of the EOA address on the client side, then authorized address, that's basically the EOA address. So basically the address of the user. And we also have the co-signer. So it's possible to have a multi-sig feature if you want, but if you don't need it, you can just put the same address as the authorized address. And after you deploy the new smart contract. So this uses an advanced technique that is explained in EIP 1167, minimal proxy contract. So the idea is that we're just going to deploy a single wallet smart contract. And every time we want to deploy new instance of this wallet, we only deploy a proxy that redirect to the single instance of the wallet. And internally it uses a special opcode that is called delegate call and that allow you to execute a smart contract in another context. So you have a smart contract A that can call the smart contract B. It uses the code of smart contract B, but it actually modifies the storage of smart contract A. And I actually have a video that explains this in more detail. That's a very smart way to save on gas costs when you deploy new smart contract. Okay, so that's it for the wallet factory. So after we're gonna inspect the code of the wallet itself. So let's go here. We'll go in cowallet.sol. Let's scroll down. So here you have the init functions. That's when we're going to initialize the different addresses. So the authorized address, the co-signer, the recovery address. So let's scroll down. So it's possible for someone to call a function on our wallet that does not exist, but we can configure that some of these go be redirected to other smart contracts. So this is just read only and that's a way to allow other smart contract to have some metadata about yourself. So that's very advanced and that's not used a lot, but that's interesting. So here, that's how you set this delegate basically. And let's keep scrolling down here. That's the function you will use to do the re to initiate the recovery process. Okay, and here we have an important function invoke zero. So that's a simple way of executing transaction with the wallet. And it only works when the cosigner is equal to the signer. So basically you're not making use of multisig. And then internally it called this method internal invoke. So let's scroll down. And here we have this function and that's where everything is going to happen. And basically here in assembly, we're gonna enter a loop and we're going to unpack the internal transaction because the way this smart wallet work, you have to specify in an internal format by using a byte argument that we can see here. You have to specify the different transaction that you actually want to carry out. So for example, if you want to transfer an ERC20 token, then there will be two internal transaction one transaction to approve the transfer, then the second one to actually do the transfer. And so here this for loop will unpack all these internal transactions and execute them. So what is actually difficult is to build here these data bytes. And for that, actually, you can steal some of the code in the test folder. And maybe that in other video, in another video, I'll explain that in more details. Okay, so this is quite a complex function. And I show you before this function invoke zero. So that's the simple way of using this wallet. If the cosigner and the signer are the same, but if you are making use of the multi-sig or you want to make use 
of metatransaction, then you have other functions, for example, invoke one cosigner send. So if this is your cosigner who send a transaction, then you will need to call this method. Let's scroll down. And here we have invoke two. So invoke two is for meta transactions. So the address that send this transaction doesn't need to be the signer or the cosigner, but you do need to have the signature of the authorized signer and the cosigner. And so here you can see that we are extracting the signature of the authorized signer and cosigner. And that's how the smart contract can internally verify that it has the correct signature. So as you can see, smart wallets have some really advanced solidity. And if you want to get better in solidity, that's a really good idea to study their code. So now you understand how a smart wallet works, what are its benefits. And the next question is how you can integrate a smart wallet in your decentralized application. From your solidity smart contract, there isn't much to do. You will identify the user who is the address of the smart contract wallet, not the address of the EOA address. You can send tokens and Ether to this smart contract wallet the same way you would with any other address. From the front end, however, there is some integration to do. The front end of smart wallets respect the standard of the Ethereum community, so these smart wallets mostly work like MetaMask. You instantiate a Web3 instance and you pass the injected provider of the smart wallet. There are some smart wallets that might have some slightly different integration methods. So to make your life easy, you can use a tool called Web3 Connect to abstract away all the differences and easily integrate any kind of wallet into your dApp. And I actually have a video about that. I'll see you there.